Eshbango Fulaska Ubogibox. Welcome and welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Matt. Thanks for tuning in. I think it must be some kind of unwritten rite of passage for cancer patients such as myself to start trying to figure out, after a lifetime of fast food and bad decisions, how to better take care of ourselves. It happened to me. I started looking into my diet and learned just how bad it was and how it may have even contributed to my health issues later in life. It was during that research that I ran across the topic of culinary mushrooms and learned some very interesting things. The first thing that I learned is that there are a lot of really fantastic culinary mushrooms that I had never even heard of. I mean, like most people, I suppose my idea of mushrooms was that little blue styrofoam container of white button mushrooms that you buy at the grocery store. I had no idea and had never even seen anything like blue, pink, yellow, and white oyster mushrooms, nor had I ever even seen or heard of a lion's mane, a chestnut, or even a shiitake mushroom that I could pick out of a crowd. Another very interesting thing that I learned is that many of these type mushrooms come with health benefits that have been known about for thousands of years. Even today, a multitude of different mushroom species are used in oriental medicines, and some of the indigenous varieties here in America have been used by we Native Americans as a persistent food source and for natural medicines for as long as anybody can remember. As many of you know, I like to grow plants. Every spring, I plant several varieties of hot peppers, potatoes, onions, and bell peppers in all available colors, and even gigantic 15-foot tall sunflowers. So as I learned about how to grow my own culinary mushrooms at home, well, that fit right into my day. I started getting into growing my own culinary mushrooms, and folks, I gotta tell you, growing mushrooms is both fascinating and delicious. Growing these type mushrooms is not that hard to do. Plus, I've been on the keto diet for over a year now, and mushrooms fit into my diet perfectly. What I'm going to share with you in this video is how I get started on a grow of mushrooms. These are living mushroom cultures that I purchased online. I have 10 cc's of pink and blue oysters, chestnut, and lion's mane mushroom cultures. What I want to do with these is to expand them out and create 600 milliliters of each living culture so that I have plenty of these type mushrooms to grow for the next year. To expand each of these four cultures into 600 milliliters of living mycelium, I'm going to first need to make a nutrient broth that I'll put into pint jars that have filtered air vents and self-healing injection ports installed on the lids. Then I'll need to put all the jars into a pressure cooker and sterilize the nutrient broth and jars. To make the nutrient broth, I have 2400 milliliters of filtered water that's almost at its boiling point on the stove. To that, I'm adding 100 milliliters of clear Cairo corn syrup. Heating the water up really helps to get it all mixed in. And then I add 5 grams of soy peptone. This creates a 4% sugar solution with some minerals for the mycelium to thrive on. While the nutrient broth cools off a little, I can start getting my pint mason jars ready. I'm going to fill each of these with 300 milliliters of the nutrient broth. The lids I'm using are the standard mason jar lids that I've drilled two quarter inch holes through. One of the holes is covered with a microfiber cloth patch and the other has a stick on self healing injection port. To each jar I add a magnetic stir. This comes in handy when the mycelium is thick in the jar and needs to be broken up. The nutrient broth is still very hot. I use a measuring cup to uh, pour it into the jars. And the jars have a 300 milliliter line on the side that makes filling them with the right amount easy to do. Once filled, I put on the lids and then I cap each jar with aluminum foil. And then I load them into a Presto 23 quart pressure cooker that has two quarts of water in it. Once the pressure cooker gets up to temp and steam starts coming out of the rocker port, I let it blow off steam for 10 minutes and then I install the rocker. As soon as the pressure gauge hits 15 PSI and the rocker starts to rock, I start a 25 minute countdown timer and then lower the heat to maintain the pressure while at the same time slowing down the rocker. After 25 minutes is up, I move the pressure cooker to a cold burner and will let it sit there overnight to cool down. 
In addition to getting everything ready for expanding my four cultures, I also want to get a new bin set up for a crop of pink oyster mushrooms. I start by using 70% alcohol to disinfect my metal work surface, the top of our chest freezer. I don't have a flow hood yet, so I use this spot because it's easy to disinfect the work surface and because there are no vents in this room. The air is very still. The monotub that I'm going to use for this grow is called a Grow Magic Monotub. I found it on Amazon. The tub, its lid, and the included liner all get sprayed down and cleaned up with 70% isopropyl alcohol. Pink oyster is a wood-loving mushroom, so I'm going to prepare my growing medium using hardwood pellets and boiling hot water. This will pasteurize and expand the pellets back into hardwood sawdust, the perfect medium for growing pink oysters. To start this process, I first set some filtered RO water to boil on the stove. Then, using my scale, I weigh out 8 pounds of hardwood pellets into a clean and alcohol-disinfected 5-gallon bucket. The formula that I use to know how much water I need to expand the pellets back into sawdust is pellet weight times 1.375. So if I have 8 pounds of pellets times 1.375 equals 11 pounds of water. So once the water is at a rapid boil, I weigh out 11 pounds of water and pour that into the bucket with the pellets. Then I install the bucket's lid and move it back to my metal work surface and wrap it up in the thickest bath towels we have to hold the uh, heat in for as long and as hot as possible to give the wood plenty of time and plenty of heat to pasteurize. It took all night and part of the next day for my bucket of wood pellets to cool down. I checked it last night before going to bed and after sitting for about six hours, it had not cooled down much at all. And that's what you want. The pellets need to stay as hot as possible for as long as possible to ensure a good pasteurization. So now it's time to get my model tub set up for colonization by the pink oyster mycelium. The grain spawn that I'm using is not my own. I purchased this grain spawn from a mushroom company on Amazon, and to be honest, I'm not very impressed with it. What I expected to receive was a five pound block of grains that were fully captured and colonized by pink oyster mycelium. When the grain spawn is fully captured and colonized, the grain becomes a semi-solid brick that I would need to break up before using. That's not the case with this spawn, but I'm going to give it a try anyway. Soon I'll be making a set of my own grain spawn jars and I'll include that in an upcoming video. To set up my monotub for colonization and a good grow, I'm going to first put in a layer of the hydrated and pasteurized sawdust, then a layer of grain spawn. Then I mix the two together so that the spawn is evenly distributed throughout the medium. I do this layering then mixing process three times, then lastly I put on a thin layer of sawdust over the top. Once completed, I put on the top and this tub will go into a spare bedroom where I'll loosely cover it with a towel so that, only, so that it only gets indirect light. If the grain spawn is viable and I've been careful enough to not allow any contamination to enter the tub, we should have a fully colonized and ready to fruit monotub in 14 to 21 days, give or take a few. Next, I pulled out the culture expanding jars that I made yesterday and sprayed them all down with 70% alcohol. This operation that I'm about to do should be done in front of a flow hood to ensure that no contamination gets into the mix, but I think that if I'm extra careful, I should find some success. I do have a flow hood on order. It arrives this week and will make this and many other sterile processes much easier to do. The cultures that I'll be expanding today are pink oyster, lion's mane, blue oyster, and chestnut. I'm going to start with the pink oyster culture syringe. The culture syringe comes with a sterile needle, but because I'm not working in front of a flow hood, I'll need to ensure that it remains sterile throughout the entire process. To do this, I first put the needle in a flame and get it red hot. Then I wrap the needle in an alcohol-soaked paper towel, clean off the injection port, and then insert the needle into the jar. 
both jars get two milliliters of culture. The remaining six milliliters I'm going to inject into a purchased bag of grain and in about two weeks I should have a nice block of fully captured and colonized pink oyster grain spawn. After getting all of my jars and bags inoculated, I put them all on a shelf out of direct sunlight. I can't help but check them every day for some mycelium action. If I've done everything correctly and I've been diligent enough in keeping everything as clean as possible, I should have some results to share with you in my next video. So if you've not yet subscribed to my channel, I invite you to subscribe and take this culinary mushroom growing journey with me. If you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comments section below and I will respond. And please don't forget to like this video and give it that thumbs up that helps us grow on your way out the door. Thanks again for tuning in everyone. We'll see you soon.